The floor is now yours, Madam Facilitator. Okay. Okay, so good afternoon po sa ating lahat. Good morning, Bakit. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon, Bakit Teaching Force. Good afternoon, Malasikito. Good afternoon, Ms. Leon Pangasinan. At isama-sama po tayo buong hapon dito sa ating orientation on LDM Course 2. So, what is this LDM Course 2 about? Then, ngayong hapon, ipag-usapan po natin ang napakahalagang course ng National Education Academy of the Philippines. Maya-maya po ay masala po po nating maintindihan kung ano ba itong tinatawag nating LDM Course 2. At the Department of Education Regional Office 1, at the same time, ang ating SD1 continue to alternative ways in delivering instructions outside the classroom. And now the opening of classes has been received from August 24 to October 5. We now have more time to find ways and to ensure our plans enhance our level of preparedness for the next school year. And in that, this is the best time for us to create a new plan. And I am Erisa Tikayago, Teacher 3 of Bakito Elementary School. School, Welcome to our learning journey on orientation and implementation of LDM 2 course. At syempre, sana po ay maging komportable po tayo ngayong hapon. Dahil mahaba po ang ating discussion. Um, maglagay na po kayo ng tubig sa inyong tabi. Kasi mahaba-haba po ito. 
Tama po. Yes, make sure na comfortable po tayong makikinig sa orientation na ito because uh, this is very important and this is aligned sa lahat po ng ating ginagawa para po sa opening of classes. So patuloy pong tumataas ang kaso ng COVID dito sa ating rehiyon. At habang tumataas po yun ay mas pinapaiting pa po sa natin ang paghahanap ng alternatibong paraan upang magpatuloy ang edukasyon ng ating mga kabataan. Sabi nga nila, ang kabataan, ang pag-asa ng ating bayan. So indeed, sabi nga ni Sir Johnson, the battle is raging but the war must be eventually won. So although the Department of Education Region 1 makes sure that quality education should be at the same even during this difficult time. So, ladies and gentlemen, ang, course, ang, ang LDM2 course ay galing po sa National Educators Academy of the Philippines. Lahat po na makaguraan sa buong Pilipinas umay, ay sumasa ilalim sa course ng LDM2. So, ngayon, uh, Mas gusto kong, ngayon naman gusto kong malaman, what do you expect to learn from this orientation? Ano po ba ang inasan po nating matutunan from this orientation? And let us find out this time kung ano nga ba objective ng ating orientation. This time alamin natin kung ano ba ang course na ito. And to discuss the course orientation, please welcome the grade 3 advisor. Mrs. Virgie Escayago, Teacher 3. Ms. Cayago, good afternoon. It's your turn. Hello, everyone. A pleasant afternoon to all of you. I want to thank our school principal, Madam Marilyn Elpinla, for always being there to support and guide us. We all know that the opening of classes is fast approaching. And so, DepEd needs to prepare our teachers and school leaders by providing trainings and professional development interventions to prepare in what we call new normal, to manage and cope with the crisis. So to better equip us in facing the realities under the COVID-19 circumstances, we will undergo these lab sessions on learning delivery modality course 2 or LDM2 for teachers. This LDM2 course aims to improve the readiness of teachers and school leaders for the implementation and management of learning delivery modalities. LDM and this course will be great help to us teachers to fit out with general principles of teaching and learning delivery in the new modalities. Through these activities, we will still be productive in our engagement with our learners, parents, and other stakeholders in the community despite of our situation. We hope this orientation will help us to come up with this LDM2 course so that we can simply do and finish the activities and increase more our knowledge in teaching our pupils. And this time around, maybe we'd like to know what do we expect from this orientation? Can we learn strategies in doing the different learning modalities from this orientation? Matututunan ba natin how to conduct and manage modular classes? Meron bang clear instructions on what we will really do on the opening of classes? Paano po ba natin? Paano po ba ang magiging class setup? Ito po ay mga halimbawa lamang ng inaasahan nating matutunan. Siguro po, mas marami pa pag natapos natin ang buong course. Ano nga ba ang objective nitong activity? 
alamin po natin ang ating mga pagdadaanan on how we implement this orientation. So at the end of this activity, we will be able to describe what this course is about and how it will help us manage the teaching learning process in the modalities. Napakahalaga po ng gagawin natin. Paano tayo magtuturo gamit ang iba't ibang modalities na plano po ng ating eskwilahan ng division o ng region. Ito po ang mga detalye ng ating pong learning continuity plan tungkol po sa ating LDMs. The flow of the early orientation. So right now, we're doing the preliminary program and then session one, the course overview. Dito po natin malalaman sa session one, Kung ano ba talaga ang course na ito at paano po ito makakatulong sa ating paghanda ng ating mga klase. And then session 2 is all about technical assistance and coaching in LDM2. Dito natin malalaman kung mayroon bang gagabay sa atin sa course na ito. We will also learn the relationship of the coach and coachee in this session. Session 3 is about walkthrough of the LBM2 modules for teachers. So, sisilipin po natin ang ating mga modules para alam natin ang mga nilalaman and then later on, mas makapaghanda tayo kung paano natin sasagutan ang mga gawain o activities. Then, the last session is about Synthesis, next step, and activity evaluation. Ito po yung flow of the orientation. So just relax po. After finishing the course, I am very sure we are all confident enough in executing lessons in the new learning modality, delivery modality. The contents of this module are lesson one, the course overview to be discussed by Madam Irisa T. Kayago and lesson two, organizing your learning action cell or lab to be discussed by Madam Ruela B. Ganyo. Thank you for listening. Again, good day to everyone. Speak to them. Wow. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Kayago for the orientation. Okay, next, I will introduce you the next speaker which is me. <laughs> okay. I will introduce to you, Ma'am Irisa. I'm back. <laughs> Ma'am Irisa. Okay. The next discussion will be our luck facilitator, no other than Madam Irisa T. Kayago. Ay, tama. Kaya go, teacher three, soon to be promoted as master teacher one in the future. <laughs> Take it away, Mami Risa. <laughs> Hello. Wala, wala, wala sa signal. <laughs> May hina ba yung sound? Hello? Ma'am Irisa, may hina po ang sound. Ha? Ay, hiniri na yung... Yung cellphone ko, yung charger ko, nang problema, kaya nagpano ko sa laptop. 
Tapos ano pa, tumisigi yung ulcer ko, kaya ito. <coughs> Sakit ng tiyan ko. Ah. masyadong malakas. Ayan na, ayan na. Okay na po. Opo. po madam Erisa, yung mic nyo po naka-off, kaya hindi po nar namin naririnig. Ay po, naka-off. Ma'am Erisa, i-unmute nyo po yung microphone nyo. Ma'am Erisa. Okay na po. Very good. Okay na po. Okay na po. Now then, here. Okay, you can go on, Mami Risa. Madali po. Hindi ko mahanap yung PowerPoint ko. Talaga pag webinar ano po, ang dami-daming problema. So, Itong mga na-encounter niyong problema, uh, nandun sa activity niyo po. Ano po? Opo. Yung po sa form na ipapas. Kung ano yung mga na-encounter, at may encounter pa po natin problem regarding this webinar. Meron na. Yung slides. Meron na pa PowerPoint. Meron na po. Nakashare na po. Okay. Thank you. First time kasi. Meron pa first time. Ganyan lang talaga pag first okay, time. Sir. Not bad po. Madami Risa. <laughs> Kayang-kaya po. Ha? Huh? Not bad? Not bad po. Kayang-kaya po. <laughs> okay. Good okay, afternoon po ulit. Okay. So, last time um, or so. Naka Naka-assign po sa akin is re re reflecting on the course overview. Okay, so course overview. Okay, so in the first COVID-19, magbabasa mag mag po tayo. So when the first COVID-19 case was recorded in March this year, the country was placed under state of national emergency. So COVID-19 ushered in a new normal in the way people conduct business and deal with each other. To prevent the further spread of infection among the populace, various measures were put in place such as a ban or mass gatherings, restriction of movement, social distancing, preventive practices like hand washing, wearing of masks, among others. So why is this LDM course formulated? Para saan? Bakit na nabuo itong LDM course? lalo na this pandemic. So, in the face of this continuing health threat, dahil sa pagtaas ng 
bilang ng COVID-19. So the Department of Education formulated na yung tinatawag nilang LCP, which is the Basic Education Learning Continuity Plan. Okay, to put into mo motion the marching orders of the secretary. So this LDM course was formulated to ensure the learning continues while guaranteeing the health, safety, well-being of learners, teachers, and other employees. So ito ay bino para maalagaan yung seguridad, yung uh, seguridad ng mga estudyante, hindi lang estudyante kundi mga teachers and then employees. So bumuha ang Department of Education para maituloy yung edukasyon ng mga kabataan. So binuo bino ang LCP. So this, the LCP recognizes that DepEd, that DepEd must adopt alternative modes of delivering learning if it is to reach all learners regardless of who and where they are. So binuo ito para kay, sa malayong lugar, maabot po ng edukasyon, lalo yung malayong lugar na hindi pwede ang face-to-face, -face, so binuo po ito. So where school-based face-to-face learning is not possible. So the LCP or Learning Continuity Plan identifies three learning delivery modalities that schools may implement. This lessons learning, blended learning, and homeschooling. So a critical component of the LCP is enabling the teachers and school leaders to use these learning de delivery modalities effectively. So LCP capacity building has two streams. The first stream is focus on the implementation and management of the alternative learning delivery system and all levels of the education system and intended for school division leaders. This course we are taking now, which is LDM2, is intended for teachers and is focused on the instructional implication of using this alter alternatives LDM. So what are the objectives of this course? First is Know the different LDMs and platforms, their features, uses, and pedagogies. Number two, plan for the implementation of the school-adapted LDMs. Number three, prepare learning materials and resources needed for the LDM. And number four, to be confident in executing lessons in the new LDM. So, so magre-reflect pa tayo. Po tayo, bakit po ba ito binuo? Paano at bakit? Okay, so this course is focused on the instructional application of using different learning delivery modalities. So yan po yung pinaka-focus uh, nung course na ito, yung instructional application of using different learning delivery modality. For example, yung blended learning, online learning, ano po ba? Modular le learning, magayon. So, what are the course design, content, and delivery of this course? So, this is a task-oriented course that combines guided study using learning modules, full learning, and collaboration through the learning action cell. So, yung learning action cell yan po ay uh, itatatal pumamaya sa module two. So, since face-to-face -face meetings are not permitted at present. We will be expected to hold lock sessions online. Yung parang ginagawa natin ngayon. So, how to organize your lock and how to run your lock sessions will be discussed later in lesson two. Okay, so as you can see, mayroon po pagpakitang shortcut. Okay, ito. LDM course module 2. So there are, so makikita nyo dito, as you can see sa table 1, the course is divided into two parts. Part, uh, part 1 covers um, LDM selection and implementation. It consists of four modules that will take about 20 hours to complete. Part 2 is the practicum component of the course covering LDM implementation throughout the school year. So the modules in part one are designed for self-study without a trainer or instructor to assist us. So this module consists of several lessons. Lessons are self-contained and include readings or video tutorials, activities, quizzes, and reflection points. So we are so 
Kumbaga, binigyan po tayo ng we are asked to keep a study notebook or learning journal to jot down our answers to the activity questions and quizzes and to record our DSN reflection. So, yung study notebook, we can use paper notebook or create a file on your computer or a smartphone. So, pwede natin siyang isulat, pwede natin siyang i-encode. So, sa atin, ano bang gagamitin? Hello? Or may sasakyan ito? Kaya yung i-notebook sa... Ah? Uh, uh, so, anong gagamitin? Kasi yung iba sabi na isusulat. So, ano pong mas... Anong mas madali sa inyo? Magsusulat o i-encode tapos ipipaste? So, i-encode na lang po tapos i-dedicate. Yes, and code na lang po tayo si Didikit kasi waste of time kapag magsusulat pa po tayo since yes. sasabing po naman po yung, yung output din po natin through link po. Online po. So yes. yun na lang po, encode na lang sabay, po. Sabay, sabay. Yun na lang po. Okay po. Sa so, yung mga iba, kung gusto yung mag-comment, pati unmute po yung speaker nyo. Opo. Complete please. Ano yung mga... Mas prefer nila. Si Mirna. 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 Si so, ano po yung mas prefer nyo, Madam Makaraag? Pa? Kung handwritten or encode na po, yung sa study notebook po. Kung ano yung gusto nila doon ako. Ah, majority. Ayun na. So, ano? Good afternoon. na lang. Good afternoon po. Opo, inkod na lang kung inkod silang lahat. Ano, ah, narinig ko si Kumbay Mirna. Okay. Ang, ano ba yung inkod? <laughs> inkod na yung inkod. Sige. Okay na, yung, yung may go. Okay na pa. Okay po. Sige po. Yung inkod na, tas ipiprint, anong size po nung kupon? Sige. Okay. Sakto sa study notebook. An anong kupon po? Hello po. Kung encoded po, din ipiprint anong size po nung kupon na angkop doon sa size na study notebook. Diba, ididikit po sa notebook? Siguro i iyan na lang size po nung ano kupon. Tingnan ko po ano size. Ano na po i-resize sa study notebook? I-resize na lang. Parang small lang po. Parang short lang yung short kupon siguro po. A4 po. A4. Kasi po sa notebook natin. Parang sa ano size. Sakto siya sa size lang niya. Kasi na kasi yung front page cover natin sa A4 yun. So A4 ang gagamitin po. Pero malaki. A4 ba yung ano? Hindi, yung size ng notebook po natin is small po. Lalagpas ng konti pag A4. Maganda ang short po. Short. Kasi ikakat din naman yun. Ikakat din naman, hindi siya magsasakoy. Hindi, i-resize na lang po. Oo, kaya sure. Ano po yan, portray or landscape? Kasi yung nasa sample na nasin sa GC po, yung galing po ata kay Madam Marcos, landscape po ata yun? Landscape, sila. Oo. Ano po nga, portray? Portray po ang ginagawa ko. Ay, portray. Para pare-pareho po tayo. Opo, maganda pag portray kasi malaki siya. At saka naka, naka ano gaya na rin siya sa study notebook natin yung portrait. Pag ilalangsip, parang hindi siya doon sa study notebook natin. Well, parang ganun kay Sir Ken, naka, naka ano rin siya, naka portrait siya. Portrait, oo. Kaya, font, ano, font size, yun. font type, kahit ano na po. Arial, arial siguro kasi yun ang standard eh. Arial. Arial, okay. size, size po, 12. 14, 14. Ay, 14. Ah, sige po. Okay, noted. Para pare-pareho. Para maganda. Hmm. Okay, so okay na po yun. Okay na. Okay na. Okay na po, thank you po. Okay na po dun. Okay, so 
Paano? Okay. Balik na po tayo dun sa aking... Okay, so pa paano makakatulong yung course na ito sa atin? So this course will help us understand the different learning delivery modality and platforms to deliver quality instructions in the new normal. So kaya ito, uh, ito, itong binong ito ng NIAP ay malaking tulong po sa atin, lalo na ngayong panahon ng pandemya na wala pong face-to-face. -face. So may mga problems din. So mayroong mga digital problems sa mga... Uh, this delivery of quality education yung about internet. So marami yung hindi nakakunek, ma mabagal yung internet connection. So yung isa yung sa mga problema natin, lalo na ngayon, na yung webinar natin, hindi natin ma maiwasan yung mga hindi, yung kumagay, ma ma mabagal yung internet connection. So in this, kahit na ganitong mahina yung mga internet connection, so gagawin na pa rin natin yung paraan para may abot natin yung uh, magandang uh, kalidad ng edukasyon sa ating kabataan. So in this course, malalaman din natin yung mga expected outputs. So may mga outputs po tayo na kailangan gawin. So ito yung, yung mga outputs. So, we are expected to generate outputs at various points in the course. So, yung part one, hmm, output po dyan. Yung sample, MELS unpacking presentation, list of targeted learning intervention, learning tasks for DL, distance learning, assessment methods in distance learning, uh, WHLP, kailangan po ng isang subject, Weekly home learning plan for one subject. Individual learning monitoring plan for student who, who lags behind in completing the learning tasks. And number seven, lag three form teacher engagement report. La, number eight, lag three session report. And number nine, to accomplish L with assessment tools with reflections. And number 10, professional development plan. So yan yung po yung mga expected outputs, outputs natin pagkatapos ng ating course na to. So, ang dahil pala, dahil pala ang ipiprepare. So, start na po natin mag-prepare. So, ano po masabi niyo po dyan sa mga out expected outputs, outputs na yan? Classmates. Marami Ito pala yung mga marami. outputs. Marami-rami po pala. Okay, yung mga lock member, mayroon din po silang i-fill up na form. Sa bawat Bawat session, meron pong fill up ang mga lock member. Alam nyo po, i-fill up nyo pong form. Mga classmates to. Hello, are you there? Saan po yung, saan po yung manggagaling, Ma'am Erisa, yung form na yun? Ano, yung binigay po ni uh, Madam Tinlock po, may... After na mga lock session po natin, mga member po, lock member, meron po silang i-fill up na form. Yung lock members, kailangan din po silang mag-fill up ng lock form 1, lock profile. And then, meron din pa pong isa. Yung i-fill up ko po, mag-fill up din po kayo. Nandun po sa binigay ni Ma Madam Pinlock po. Yung lock members will complete the form 4 lock engagement report. Meron na po kayo nun. Yung number 7 po, yung mga lock member po mag-fill up din po nyan. Yung lock form. Sinan po lahat po yan ni Madam Pinlock po sa GC natin. Hello? Meron na po kayo nun? Meron na po, meron na po. So, so yung bawat ano po eh, after po ng lock session po natin, mag-fill up po kayo nun. Ang bawat lock members po. Yung lock one, eh, lock form one to four. Yung lock, yung lock one, tapos yung lock four, 
wala form 4, may fill up po ng ano yun, lock numbers. After po ng ano, lock session. Every after ano yun? lock session. Ano yun, alin yun, Ma'am Elisa? Form 1. Form 4 po. Yung form 1. Report. Lock form 1. Mm. Tapos, lock form 4 po. Okay. Yun po yung kagawin nyo po. Yung, uh, yan yung po yung lock engagement report. Okay, okay. Yan yung nasa number 7. Opo, yan. Ang dami yung gagawin. Okay. So, yan po yung mga expected outputs po natin for this course, LDM course. Two. Okay, thank you. Kung so, meron po kayong question, any question po? Meron pa po ba kayong mga katanungan? So, uh, tapos na po, Ma'am Elisa. Okay, reflection lang po yung sa akin na may yung mga expected output. Outputs lang po yung sa akin po, Ma'am. Ah, oh, so madali. So, okay lang po yun, Ma'am, sa akin. Meron pa tayong susunod. So, meron pa tayong susunod na discussions? Meron po, Madam. Ako po. Hmm. Sir Ken, ah, Sir Ken. Okay. Sir Ken, sa ragtun si kayo, Layman, present. Brown out po kasi sa amin. Para na sa bayang bang, Mami, Mamela. Ma Mamela po, ma po dito sa amin. Nag-shutdown po yung ano po, yung laptop po so, ngayon lang po. Mabuti. Oh, mabuti mayroon kang ano, signal. Yung ano po, madam, yung data po ng kapatid ko po. <laughs> ang ginagamit ko po. Ah, okay. So, okay, again. Ni pinasa ko po doon sa mal na so, <laughs> Download ko pa po ma'am saglit. Ay sige po sir. Thank you po. Sir Ken. May wala pong ilaw sa inyo, Madam Ella. Yes po. Namatay po yung wifi. Wala pong ano, wala pong ilaw. Kasensya na po. Yes, present ko na po yung kay Madam Ella. Thank you po, Sir Ke. Uh, Madam Elisa. Okay, sige. Okay, good afternoon po ulit. Okay, so uh, next po natin, uh, speaker. It's a great day advisor. Please welcome, Ruela Diganyo. Ruela. Hello po, good afternoon po sa lahat. Good afternoon po sa ating napakagandang principal, Madam Marilyn Alpinlac, sa ating pong lock leader. Sam, sa kayo. Pamela. Madam Virgie Kayago, to our lock facilitator, Madam Elisa Kayago, and to our lock documenters, for Jeffrey Villanueva. Good afternoon po sa ating lahat. Uh, Madam Elisa, pwede pong pahirap nung floor po para ma-present ko po yung kay Ma'am Rowella po. What will I do? Thank you po. Okay na po. Yes, Ma'am. Sinarili po. Sorry po. Kala ko ako ulit. <laughs> okay po. Sige na po.
Sa second slide na po tayo, sir. Thank you. Okay, so welcome po sa module 1, lesson 2, which is organizing your learning action cell. So next po, sir. So these are the objectives of this lesson. This lesson will help us set up our lock and prepare for lock activities in the succeeding modules po. By the end of this lesson, we will be able to organize a lock to support our learning, enumerate the roles and responsibilities of different lock members, set protocols and norms for the conduct of lock sessions, and accomplish the required lock forms. Meron po tayong four lock forms na mamaya po sabihin ko po kung sino-sino po ang dapat mag-accomplish po nun. So next po, sir. <coughs> So in this lesson, we have three activities about DEPED Order Number 35, Series 2016. So let us refresh our memory on this. First, we should define what LAC is. So LAC, or Learning Action Cell, is a group of teachers who engage in collaborative learning sessions to solve shared challenges encountered in the school, facilitated by the LAC leader. So LAC serves as a professional development strategy for the improvement of teaching and learning. Itong LAC po ay ginagawa po natin sa school wherein yun ang nagiging learning community natin to improve our practices and also yung learner achievement po. So minsan ginaganap din po siya sa district which is yung District Learning Action Cell or DLAC. Next. So what is the rationale of this DEPED order? Number one, DEPED works to protect and promote the right of the Filipinos to quality basic education. So in order to have this quality education, DEPED supports our professional development. Ang DEPED po ay nag-organisa po nitong LAC na ito para po mas lalong yumabong ang ating kaalaman. Para po mas lalo tayong matuto kung ano po yung mga current trends ngayon and issues. So, by continuing study, like what we are doing now, yung ginagawa po natin ngayon, mas lalo po tayong natututo. Number two, quality of learning is greatly influenced by the quality of teaching. Kaya po ang DepEd ay nag-hire ng mga magagaling na guru tulad po natin and support their development in the teaching profession. DepEd organized professional learning community like school-based learning action cell that will aid teachers in the construction of new knowledge about education, community, teaching, and learning to suit the present needs of learners. So, binibigyan po tayo ng opportunity ng DepEd na mas uh, matutunan po natin yung mga kung ano po yung mga uh, umuuso po ngayon sa methods and strategies, pati na rin po sa paggamit ng mga ICT. Number three, successful teaching is a result of the systematic use of appropriate strategies. So, ang successful teachers nagpo-possess po yan ng good grasp of content. So, uh, um, they are able also to select and implement the most effective instructional strategies. Diba tayo po? Pag nasubukan natin ng isang strategy at hindi po, kumbaga, medyo may mar marami po ang medyo mababa ang grades nila or mababa yung mga scores po nila, gumagamit pa po tayo ng iba pa pong strategies. Yun po ang isang katangian ng isang magaling na guro. Uh, hindi lang tayo nag i po sa isang method o sa isang strategy. Bagpos tayo po ay gumagamit ng uh, maraming strategies kung saan makakapili po tayo ng appropriate po sa mga learners po natin. So next slide po. Number four, different methods of teacher professional development are implemented throughout the DepEd to improve the TLP or the teaching learning process. However, most of these are top-down processes wherein expert knowledge is shared. Example po ng top-down processes ay yung mga lectures or workshops during ECHO teacher training. Halimbawa, si representative po ay uh, uh, pinadala sa isang national. Then, ineko po niya sa regional, ineko sa division, and then ineko sa district, and then ineko po sa school. That is top-down 
processes po. So, yun po yung ibig sabihin ng top-down. Manggagaling sa pinakataas papunta sa pinakababang organization po. Then, number five, a bottom-up teacher professional development programs where colleagues can learn as a group. Ang example naman po nitong bottom-up ay itong ginagawa po nating school-based learning action cell. Maaari din pong teaching circles, communities of practice, or mga case study. Kung ang isang teacher po ay nakagawa na isang case study na effective po, ipishishare ni teacher po yun sa, uh, sa school, sa mga colleagues po niya, yun po ay tiyatawag na bottom-up. Magagaling po siya sa iisang teacher hanggang sa ishishare po siya through school, district, and so on po. Maliwanag po ba? <laughs> okay lang po, hindi po masyadong mabilis. Okay, so policy statements na po tayo. Number one, good educational systems ensure that professional development programs are available and accessible to teachers. So itong policy po na to, hinahalos na yung fact that the locus of learner development is at the school. Yun po yung totoo na ang development po ng isang bata ay nagsisimula po sa atin sa school where deliberate measures must be taken to improve student learning outcomes. Number two, action points that directly address the quality of TLPs or teaching learning processes must be included in, in the SIT. Kailangan po na ka-include po sa, sa ating SIT. Kaya po doon po sa ating SBM, hindi po ba nakalagay doon po ang ating AIP, SIT, which is kasama din po ang ating mga learning action cell na kami mismo pong grupo po ng ano, ng uh, grupo po namin ang nag-collect po nun kasi kailangan po talaga iyon. So this policy re reiterates that Good teaching is the primary job of teachers, and supporting CPD is one of the most vital functions of school heads or principals. So, si principal po, kaila, uh, kailangan po, ini-encourage niya po tayo to grow professionally. So, mayroon po tong CPD, mayroon po tayong learning action cell, inset. So, yun po, ay, uh, actually, yun na po yung... Uh, pag-support sa atin ng principal na magkaroon po ng continuing professional development. Then number three, DEPED institutionalized LOC that aim to develop and support successful teachers. Through LOC, it nurtures our knowledge. Hindi po ba, parang ito po, natututo pa po tayo lalo. Yung attitudes po natin, yung competence po natin in terms of curriculum, instruction and assessment, para sa ating mga ginagawang trabaho po. Dahil po dito, mas nagkakaroon po tayo ng motivation dahil natututo po tayo kung ano po yung kailangan ng ating mga estudyante. So next po, number four. <clears throat> Locks will become the school-based communities of practice that are positive, caring, and safe spaces. So, Learning action cells enable teachers to do collaborative planning. So, nagkakaroon po tayo ng plano sa mga, mga uh, problem solving, action implementation, na nag-delete po sa ito to improve yung mga knowledge, skills, and attitudes natin. Uh, that will consequently and significantly improve student learning and development. Number five, key aspects of the process are ongoing collaborative learning or problem solving. Sir, can pakiklik nga po yung box na po. So, ito po siya. Yan po yung framework po ng ating lab. So, Community of practice with collaborative planning, problem solving, and action implementation. So, um, and then, so many for improved teachers, content knowledge, pedagogic, 
practical skills, assessment strategies and professional ethics, and then student learning and holistic development. Isa lang ko ang ibig sabihin ng framework na yan. Kumula po collaboration within the community, within the school, hindi po matututo ang mga teacher. Wala pong, dahil walang collaboration, walang support. So kapag walang support, hindi magiging successful ang teacher. Kapag hindi naging successful si teacher, hindi rin po, or wala rin pong, hindi rin po magkakaroon ng holistic development ang ating mga learner. So yun po yung framework na yan. So ang pinakauna po natin ginagawa is collaboration. At yan po yung ginagawa natin ngayon. Nagkakaroon po tayo ng collaboration, nagpa-plan po tayo, and then dahil po doon, nag improve yung knowledge natin, and then pag na-improve yung knowledge natin, ayan na po, magiging result po nito, mas gagaling po yung mga sudyante natin dahil sa mga bagong strategies po na ating natutunan. Pakiklik po ulit yung pink na box, sir, sa baba. <laughs> Thank you. So back to number six, locks are the most cost-effective CPD. Uh, lock may be so useful in OOE, so alam na po natin yan. It is to support locks to upgrade the quality of teaching and learning in their respective schools. So, hindi lang po ito basta-basta sa snack lang po. Kung hindi sa mga materials na maaari natin gamitin sa isang learning action plan. Uh, learning, learning, okay. <laughs> Le learning action cell, I should say. So, yun po yun. Okay. Kasi po, minsan gumagamit po tayo ng mga coupons, mga mga pencil pen. So, yun po. Doon po manggagaling yung mga funds sa MOOE. Next po. So, topics for lock sessions. Ano po ba dapat yung mga consider natin sa mga topics for lock sessions? So, unang-una po, learner diversity and student <coughs> inclusion. Successful teachers know and care for their students, including learner diversity, which may be in gender, the socioeconomic status, religious beliefs, and special learning needs. So tayo pong mga teacher, hindi po tayo naminili kasi mayroon nga pong tinatawag na education for all. Ang edukasyon ay pantay-pantay sa lahat. Mapamayaman, mapamahirap, kung, kung ano man ang gender niya, kung ano ba yung re, uh, religion niya, kung ano yung pinaniniwalaan nila, ang edukasyon po ay para sa lahat. So, pag po'y pili po tayo ng topic, dapat i-consider po natin itong mga ito po. Then, number two, content and pedagogy of the basic education program. So, student learning will improve because the teacher is more systematic and better contextualized to the learning needs of students. By studying the K-12 curriculum, we will able to prepare for lessons. So yun po yung ginagawa natin. Yung content po ng ating K-12 basic education, nag-aaralan po natin mabuti para ma, uh, maibigay po natin o ma-demo po natin sa kanila yung mga tamang competencies na dapat nilang matutunan. <clears throat> Number three, assessment and reporting in the K-12 basic education program. The data from formative assessment na ginagawa po natin um, after ng isang lesson, yung ginagawa po natin mga formative assessment, it can improve our subsequent lessons, yung mga prerequisite na lessons po, yung mga susod na mga lessons. Assessment provides teachers and learners with the necessary feedback about learning outcomes. This feedback enables teachers to continually select, organize, and use rubrics. So, kapag nakita na po natin yung results sa mga formative tests na or formative assessment na ginawa po natin, uh, makikita po natin, magkakaroon po tayo ng feedback. Kung yung mga rubrics na ginamit po natin, yung assessment na ginawa po natin ay tama po, okay, okay po yung ating assessment. Pero kung medyo hindi po maganda yung lumabas sa formative, uh, magkakaroon po tayo ng remedial at iibahin po natin yung instruction natin. Magkakaroon po tayo ng bagong strategies. 
21st Century Skills and ICT Integration in Instruction and Assessment. So we must enrich lessons with simple integration strategies utilizing ICT that are developmentally appropriate. Ito na po, ang 21st century teachers ay magagaling, kaya po tayo ay dapat marunong po tayo sa mga, marunong po tayong gumamit ng mga computers. Yan, nag integrate po tayo sa lessons po natin ng mga videos. Yun na po ay, ay integrate, pag-integrate ng ICT. Nag-utilize po tayo, gumagamit po tayo ng mga mga mga, uh, mga mga ICT, yun po. And then last is curriculum contextualization, localization, and indigenization. So curriculum contextualization is the process of matching the curriculum content and instructional strategies relevant to learners. By linking new content to the local experiences that are familiar to students, learning will be more efficient for and relevant to them. Kaya po kung mapapansin ninyo, from kinder to grade 3, lalo na po ngayon, anong sabi po nila, kinocontextualize po nila yung mga modules para po mas talong maintindihan ng mga bata. Uh, yung Tagalog or English, ginagawa po nilang pangasinan. Kasi kung yun po yung uh, medyo mo, uh, yun po yung kanilang uh, language sa bahay, mas gamay po nila ang pangasinan, mas may intindihan po nila yung binabasa po nila. That's why meron pong curriculum contextualization. <clears throat> Next po. Yan. Lock participants and their roles. Yan. This, yung nakikita niyo po, that is the composition of learning action cell. Each lock should have leader, facilitator, documenter, and members as shown in this slide. Kung mapapansin niyo po, andyan po ang ating lock leader, maaari pong si principal po or seniors po. Yan. Kilala na po ba natin kung sino po ang ating lock leader? Hello po. Sino po ang sasagot? Sino po ang ating lock leader? Thank you, Super GS, kaya na po, Madam Ella. Thank you, Madam Dolor. Sino po ang ating lock leader, I see, Madam Fergie. Sino naman po ang ating lock facilitator po? <clears throat> Madam Elisa Kayago po, Mamila. Thank you, Sir Jeffrey. At sino naman po ang ating lock documenter? Thank you, Madam Dolor. Ulit, magpapansin namin si Madam Dolor. Tama po ang ating lock documenter ay si Sir Jeffrey Villanova. At ang mga lock members ay tayo po, which is, uh, consists po tayo ng uh, 11, uh, 11 or 12. 12 po na lock members. So, each lock should have a leader, facilitator, documenter, and members as shown in this slide. So, yung external resource person, it may be invited when necessary, though the preference is for the lock resource persons to be from among the lock members. Dapat po talaga among lock members po yung ating resource person. Pero kung mas mayroon pong mas, um, kumbaga, gamay po yung topic at may mas Ma madami pa po siya, madami pong knowledge yung isang tao na yon pero outside po siya, eh, pwede rin po tayo mag-invite. Ang tawag po natin doon ay external resource person po. <clears throat> Next slide po. So, lock participant and the participants on their roles. Ano ba ang roles ng ating lock leader? So, 
usually this is the this is the school head okay being the de facto leader of the law for all the locks in the school the following are his or her roles oversees the implementation of lock integrates lock into the is sip or aip mobilizes resources meets with facilitators to decide on the next top lock topic so si lock leader nakikipag-meet po siya sa ating facilitator para malaman po natin kung kailan po yung magiging next na lock session si <clears throat> lock leader din po ino organize po niya yung grouping sa the beginning of each school year so dapat sa umpisa pa lang po ng school year nag-organize na po si lock leader ng groupings and ensure that each lock has an assigned facilitator it uh, si lock leader din po ino provide po niya mga feedback at sinasubmit po yung lock progress report sa district or di kaya naman po ay sa division office she, uh, he or she adopts and shares lock best practices from other schools, thereby developing a culture of collaboration and continuous improvement. So, si lock leader din po, uh, nag adapt po siya at nag share sa atin ng mga best practices. Sabi nga nila, benchmarking is learning the best from the best practices practices of others. Yun po yun. Pag nag-benchmark po tayo, nakaka- uh, nakikita po natin yung mga best practices po ng ibang schools na pwede po nating i para po mas lalong uh, yumabong po ang ating school, magkaroon po ng, mas magkaroon po ng progress ang ating school. Di ba pag, ano po, pag nag-benchmark po tayo sa mga magagaling, magiging magaling na po tayo, mas magaling sa kanila. So, si lock leader po, ini-insure niya po yung pag-monitor po ng lock sessions and related activities and evaluating their impact on teacher professional development, quality teaching, and pupil achievement. <clears throat> so, si lock leader po, uh, kapag may strategies po na pinag, uh, pinag-aralan po sa isang lock session na dapat gamitin po sa isang classroom, maaari pong si lock leader ay uh, mag-observe po doon sa klase kung nai-implement po ba ng tama yung pinag-usapang strategies po. So, yun po ang roles ng ating, role ng ating lock leader. Lock facilitator po. Next slide po. So, lock facilitator could be school head, master teacher, or a senior member of the faculty. Uh, pinaprovide din po niya yung technical assistance in the development of the lock serves as a resource person on a specific topics. Siya din po yung invite ng mga external resource persons kapag kailangan po. So, si lock facilitator din po, siya po ang nag-check at nag-monitor ng attendance ng mga members. At kung may mga kailangan pong isubmit, si facilitator din po ang mag-check at mag-monitor po ng mga submit, uh, sinasubmit ng mga materials. And C to E, that team meetings start and end on time. Si lock facilitator po, siya po yung nakakalam kung nakapag-start po ng tama at nakapag-end po ng tama sa oras yung ating lock session. And that agenda for the meeting are covered. Kailangan na-covered po siya. Uh, ini-encourage din dapat po ni lock facilitator yung uh, active engagement and participation ng mga members. Reports regularly to lock leader on lock progress, prepares his or her session plan that identifies the topic, ob objectives, materials needed, and outline of activities. So, yun po. Next slide, lock members po. <clears throat> lock members. Uh, si lock members, dapat nagpa-participate po siya actively, lalo na po kapag face-to-face -face po ang ating uh, lock session. Develops plan and implements it in the classroom. Yun po, tayo po ang nag-implement sa classroom ng kung ano po yung naging topic po natin sa lock session. Uh, captures evidence and shares it with the lock leader. Prepares and submits documents. Allows lock leader to observe the implementation process. So, lock members are the teachers who share common concerns such as grade level assignments or learning area assignments. Minsan po kasi sa isang lock session, 
mostly sa mga secondary po, pwedeng by grade po sila. Kasi madami po pag high school, pwedeng by grade level, pwedeng by department, or pwedeng as a whole. Yun po ang sa NAC members po. Next po, NAC documenter. Si NAC documenter, si Sir Jeffrey po ito. Siya po yung nag-document ng LAC proceedings. Uh, he keeps the record of attendance and outputs of members. Siya po ang nagtatago ng mga attendance at mga outputs po. And then gathers evidences of implementation, helps the LAC leader in writing reports, provides information on the process of the LAC and insights of the teachers about student learning. Si LAC documenter po, ito po ay isang member ng LAC that has been assigned to record the minutes of the team meetings. So, si Sir Jeffrey po, siya po yung mag-record po dapat ng minutes of the team meetings. Yun po ang trabaho po ng isang LAC documenter. Next slide po. LAC resource person shares current trends and best practices. Mentors or coaches, teachers, content, and pedagogy coordinate with the LAC facilitator on materials and equipment to be used. Si LAC resource person po, kagaya po na sinabi ko po kanina, it can be a member of the LAC or someone external invited to talk and lead a session on a specific topic. Pwede po siyang manggaling sa labas. Uh, si resource person din po, he or she facilitates the activities during the session. Siya po yung nag-facilitate po ng mga activities kung mayroon po activities, which may include workshops and demonstrations. Mostly ito nangyayari po kapag face-to-face -face po ang ating session. So nasa processes na po tayo. Before, so po, before po, planning po tayo. Assessment of needs. So, we can capture these needs in different forms. Pwede pong sa kaso mga observation results, pwede pong research-based uh, research teacher development needs, student assessment results. So, doon po natin pwede pong makuha po itong needs na uh, assessment of needs po. Yung needs na kailangan natin uh, uh, kailangan natin maging agenda, agenda po para sa ating LAC session. Kung ano po yung napapansin natin pangangailangan ng ating estudyante or kahit tayong mga teacher, kung ano po yung mga needs natin na dapat ay magkaroon po tayo ng uh, learning action cell. Then, prioritization of topics or agenda. Kapag na-identify na po yung mga needs, mag agree na po yung mga members, tayong mga members, kung alin sa mga na-identify ang kailangan i-prioritize. Kasi minsan, madami po yung needs na na-identify natin. Kailangan lang po nating mamili doon ng iba-prioritize. mga aring in terms of urgency of need. So, pwedeng sa interest or time needed sa pag-a-address po ng needs. Kung ano po yung talagang sinakulangan na po natin i-address, uh, kailangan na kailangan po nating i-prioritize. Formation of LAC. So, one LAC could be composed of 5 to 15 members, kagaya po nang sinabi nila. Okay, uh, 5 to 15 members lang po. So, kaya po yung ating dalawang co-teachers po ay napunta po. So, kaya po tayo. Ito man ay by key stage, grade level, learning, area or cluster, by cluster kapag multi-grade schools po. Maaaring mag-organize ang school kahit ilang lock po ito. Pero, uh, ang ano po talaga is once a month. Once a month po. Identification of appropriate interventions. Interventions could be in the form of learning materials, instructional materials, Equipment, facilitates modal, uh, facilities, modality in teaching or strategies in teaching. Then scheduling of meetings. The LAC members can decide in the schedule, length and frequency of meetings. It should be conducted at least once a month. So kinakailangan po natin uh, magkaroon ng learning action cell once a month. Interactions may also be done through ICT, kagaya po ng ginagawa natin ngayon, which is yung Google Meet po. When it is difficult to have face-to-face, -face, lalo na po ngayon na may pandemic po. 
So, gumagamit po tayo ng ICT. Next. Before pa din po. Setting up resources. Resources could be human or material that could be, uh, should be set up before the implementation of the sessions. Human resource could be individuals who are tapped as resource person. Kasi may two kinds of resources po tayo. Human resource at material resources. Yung human resource tayo po na mga nagpa, uh, tayo pong mga um, speakers. And then yung material resources naman po, it could be supplies, providing worksheets, videos, equipment, food, venue, yun po. Yun po yung two kinds of resources. Assignment of work, LAC members could be given specific roles to perform during LAC sessions. Pero hindi po ibig sabihin na, halimbawa po si Madam Virgie, uh, siya po ang na-assign sa June na LAC leader. Hindi po pe pwedeng LAC leader po siya ng the whole year, school year. Hindi po pe pwede yun. Uh, rotation po yun ang mangyayari. Pwede pong ibang seniors din po ang maging LAC leader. These roles could be rotated among the members of the group. So, hindi lang po sa isang tao po, iikot yung roles po. And then, preparing uh, lock implementation norms. Norms are the framework from which team members commit to conduct business. These are time and venue. Sir, pakiclick po yung circle na pink ulit. Thank you po. So, yan po yung lock implementation norms. Time and venue. Uh, saan at kailan tayo magmini? Kailan tayo mag-uumpisa? Yan. Then, listening. Uh, how will we listen to our peers? How will we discourage interruptions when someone is speaking? Yan yung mga norms po natin. Confidentiality. What content is to be held in confidence? What can be shared after the meeting? Sa decision making naman po, how will we arrive at a decision? What if everyone doesn't agree with the group decision? Then participation, is participation optional? Will we have an attendance policy? May attendance policy po ba tayo? Anong gagawin po natin kung ang isang member po natin ay may mga naminis na mga lock sessions or meetings? And then your expectations po, what do we expect from team members? Do we need a method for ensuring each member comes to the meeting prepared with appropriate data or other assignments? So, yun po yung mga norms. Implementation norms na dapat sa umpisa pa lang po, alam na po natin. And then, next po, balik tayo dun, sir. Yan, dun po sa, yan. And then, preparing line item budget. Uh, budget shall come from school MOOE, yun na po yung ko kanina. And then, writing of lock plan, it should be written and documented. Kagaya po nito, di document po, or nire-record po ni Sir Kenneth ang ating lock. Dapat po dun sa lock plan po natin, uh, nakaready na po siya before po tayong mag-session. Next po, balik, pakipindot po yung pink na, ano sir, circle, yan po. Next slide po. So, processes, nasa process na po tayo during. Okay, during the lock session, the lock session po, uh, the priorities set out in the lock plan are implemented through a variety of activities. Uh, katulad po nang nakalagay dyan, maaaring lecture, practicum, orientation, coaching, workshop, uh, development and utilization of IMs. Yan po yung mga activities na maaari nating gawin uh, during lock session followed by collaborative discussion of possible ways forward. The final activity of the session will involve individual and group action planning in order to implement agreed activities in the classroom. Next spot. So, ito after the last session po. 
NAC members are expected to implement their proposed strategies. Kailangan na po natin implement kung ano po yung strategies na napag-usapan po natin. Or yung mga activities. So, NAC members should be prepared to report back on the success of these activities in future NAC sessions. Then, i-report po natin kung success po ba o mayroon pong failure doon sa strategies na ating uh, ginawa sa classroom. Lock facilitators and lock leaders should monitor these activities and evaluate how far they are contributing to improve outcomes for learners at school. School heads or principals should report the lock by doing class observations and encourage teachers to continually improve instruction so that student learning will also improve. So, yan po. May mga lock forms po dyan. Maka-hyperlink po kaso. So, sa ating lock forms po, ang lock, uh, form 1 lock profile Lock facilitator po at lock members po ang magkukomplete po nito. Tandaan po ah, uh, sa akong lahat ng members at si facilitator po, kailangan po natin kumpletuhin po yung Form 1. Pero I think na accomplish na po ni Madam Teresa, kinuha na po ang ating mga G, uh, DepEd account, ano po. Then sa lock Form 2, ang ating lock facilitator lang po ang kukompleto po nito. And then sa lock, lock uh, form 3 lock session report, ang gagawa din po nito ay ang ating lock facilitator. And then sa lock, uh, lock engagement report, form 4, yung form 4 po, lahat ng lock members po ay kukompletuhin po ito. Kasi mayroon po yung um, disagree, agree, ganun po. Mayroon po siyang checklist. Hindi ko na po may pakita na sa laptop po kasi. So yun po. Uh, mostly, ang halos sasagot po ng mga forms po ay ang ating facilitator. Magkakaroon lang po tayo ng, uh, magsasagot lang po tayo sa form 1 at sa form 4 po. So, yun po, that ends my topic po, which is the DO35 series of 2016. Thank you po. Improvement begins with I. Thank you, Mrs. Ayala Biganyo. Thank you for the very informative presentation. Thank you, Paul. Congratulations, Congratulations Madam Ayala. Very well explained. Tapi. So, may susunod pa po ba? Um, Ma'am, yung ano po, module 2 po, Module 2. Ako na po yun, ma'am. Module 2, lesson 1. So, yes po. Pero, malakas ang ulan na. Mapira po ko. Hindi. Malakas ang ulan. Bukas, gawin mo natin bukas. So, kinu-sabot. Bukas na lang po. Yes. Sir Ken, thank you po. Thank you po, Sir Ken. Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. Ma'am. Ang ganda-ganda ng presentation mo. Kaya-kaya mo hanggang module 4. <laughs> kahit, kahit buuin mo na. Okay, sige na po. Sige na. 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 Sige na.